Y chromosomes in chimps and humans are horrendously different. That's not actually my words. The uh, words are from David Page, who's probably the most uh, knowledgeable uh, researcher on the human Y chromosome. Uh, the common chimp and human Y chromosomes are horrendously different from each other. And that quote is taken from the fickle Y chromosome, chimp genome reveals rapid rates of change in uh, nature.com slash news. So there, it's referring to a paper in Nature which came out in 2010, interestingly enough. Uh, chimpanzee and human Y chromosomes are remarkably divergent in structure and gene content. That can be found on the web if you get nature, you can find it in one place. And it's also uh, found in handle.net. Uh, Actually, I may have to revise that one because I think that that one may have gone dead and there's now an, an NIH one, which will be underneath the, uh, the video. I'm going to go over the talk outline. First, I'm going to talk about evolutionary expectations for the Y chromosome, which are that it should be similar between chimps and humans. The data that shows the two species Y chromosomes to be horrendously different. The fact that intrahuman variance is less than expected. And finally, the failure of evolution to predict these facts. We won't stop there. We're going to talk about research opportunities for creation science some of which are sitting very near the, the surface. The expectations of evolutionists are that the rest of the genome is 99% similar. Well, it depends on where you count it. And I've picked up numbers anywhere from under 70% to 99.75%, depending on which parts you're talking about. Um, and so you'd expect the, the genome to be pretty close to the same. Many reptiles are sexed by heat. For example, turtles, the uh, cool ones, uh, cool eggs deter, uh, uh, turn into males, the hotter eggs turn into females. Uh, to Atars, it's the reverse. The hotter eggs turn into males, the cooler eggs turn into females. Alligators, it's the medium ones that are males and the hot ones and the cool ones turn into females. And so at that point you have, ex, you have male and female genome all together in one place. The genes don't determine the sex. The Y chromosome and the X chromosome supposedly originated from a standard chromosome because we descended from reptiles. And that means that the Y is a degenerate X. Since the Y chromosome cannot cross over except for some very small parts at the ends, which you'll, we'll show you, with any other chromosome, there's no way of correcting it. That means that bad genes or simply deletions of genes get to hitchhike on good genes. As long as they're not too bad, um, the good gene will carry them along. Assuming common ancestry, the Y chromosome has to have grown smaller because it's smaller than the X. How much smaller? Well, there's a, a Y chromosome that's artificially colored in blue and an X chromosome which is artificially colored in pink. And you can see the size difference. Now, I've given you a summary, but that's not just what I say, that's what the standard textbook says, or the standard news, science news in this particular case, Science Magazine. The Y chromosome has long been thought of as a stagnant part of the genome where genes are slowly decaying in males of all species. For almost a century, researchers have thought that the Y chromosome with far fewer genes than the X was decaying. Both sex chromosomes evolved from an ordinary pair of chromosomes more than 200 million years ago, and they have a reference. But since then, the Y has steadily lost genes as well as its ability to recombine and swap genes with the X chromosome. 
This suggested that the Y has long been an isolated chromosome with little left to lose. Just a couple of hundred genes at most whose job is to produce sperm and determine the sex of offspring. As a result, researchers predicted that the Y chromosome should be nearly identical in humans and chimpanzees, like the rest of the genome. That's what everybody thought. Uh, many genes have been lost. Well, actually, when we went to look at how many genes there were, this is a discussing page, and I know this is Forbes, but um, it's quoting the authority, found that the human Y chromosome contains only 19 of the 600 genes it once shared with the X chromosome. So yeah, there's a lot of chromosomes that are genes that have disappeared from the Y chromosome. The common Getting back to nature news, the common chimp pantroglodytes and human Y chromosomes are horrendously different from each other. This is David Page of the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts, who led the work. It looks like there's been a dramatic renovation or reinvention of the Y chromosome in the chimpanzee and human lineages. Mm, reinvention, renovation, that sounds design, doesn't it? Um, our laboratory previously demonstrated that the human male-specific Y, euchromatin, is largely composed of two sequence classes, ampliconic and ex-degenerate. We find that the same two sequence classes dominate the chimpanzee MSY euchromatin, and thus the same was likely true in the common ancestor. If you assume a common ancestor, it, yeah, you'd have to say that. The ampliconic segments are composed largely of large, nearly identical repeat units, most often arrayed as palindromes, or stretches of DNA that read the same both ways, like the name Otto, O-T-T-O. And, uh, and they harbor multi-copy gene families expressed predominantly or exclusively in the testis. By contrast, the X degenerate segments are dotted with single copy homologs of X gene, X linked genes. Uh, these are stretches of DNA that can be aligned with genes on the X chromosome. These single copy MSY genes, most of which are expressed ubiquitously, are surviving relics of ancient autosomes, that is, chromosomes that aren't sex chromosomes, from which the X and Y chromosome evolved. If you buy that picture, you pretty much have to say that. Together, the ampliconic and ex-degenerative sequences provide, uh, comprise the bulk of the uh, male-specific Y euchromatin in both chimpanzee and human. A third sequence class in the human MSY euchromatin, the X-transpose species, and if you're going, wait a minute, I thought we already had X-degenerate, how do we have X-transposed? It's very simple. Your degenerate stuff looks like it's been mutated quite a bit. There's a lot of change between it and the X chromosome. You can kind of align them, but you can see that they're not uh, anywhere near identical. On the other hand, these X transposed sequence are like 99 point something percent identical to the X chromosome. So that in humans has no counterpart in the chimpanzee uh, male specific Y. The presence of these sequences in the human MSY is the result of an X to Y transposition that occurred in the human lineage after its divergence from the chimpanzee lineage. I mean, what else could it be? The design is out of the question and so it, ha it, it has to be, since it's identical to the X, it has to have been just taken and put in. Skipping over a paragraph, uh, given that primate sex chromosomes are hundreds of millions of years old, theories of decelerating decay, which were the standard before Page, would predict that the chimpanzee and human MSY should have changed little since the separation of these two lineages just six million years ago. To test this prediction, we aligned and compared the nucleotide sequence of the chimpanzee and human MSYs. As expected, we found that the degree of similarity between orthologous, that's comparable or alignable chimpanzee and human MSY sequences, which are like 98.3% nucleotide identity, differs only modestly from that reported when comparing the rest of the chimpanzee and human genomes 
98.8, which, you know, is 99% chimp, right? Um, that is if you compare certain parts of the genome. Surprisingly, however, over 30% of chimpanzee MSY sequence has no homologous alignable counterpart in the human MSY and vice versa. And we're going to show you that in a minute. In this respect, the MSY differs radically from the remainder of the genome where less than 2% of chimpanzee euchromatic sequence lacks a homologous alignable counterpart in humans and vice versa. We conclude that since the separation of the chimpanzee and human lineages, sequence gain and loss have been far more concentrated in the MSY than in the balance of the genome. Skipping over several paragraphs, indeed at six million years of separation the difference in MSY gene content in chimpanzee and human is more comparable to the difference in autosomal or non-sex chromosome gene content in chicken and human at 310 million years of separation. That's a lot. Why is the why that different? We've conducted the first comprehensive comparison of Y chromosomes from two species. Apparently anywhere in the literature, providing empirical insight into Y chromosome evolution and a test of decelerating DK theories. These theories elegantly account for the degeneration observed in neo Y chromosomes recently evolved from autosomes. However, they did not predict and cannot account for the rapid divergence of the older, highly evolved chimpanzee and human MSYs described here. That is failure of a theory. Instead, remodeling and regeneration have dominated chimpanzee and human MSY evolution during the past six million years. It sounds a lot like intelligent design, no? Skipping over paragraph. Again, in the future, complete Y chromosome sequences from additional species will shed further light on these hypotheses. And then what they do is they show their data in graphical form, and this is fascinating. First, um, uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of difference between the way things align. Um, you see there's uh, this uh, heterochromatic, uh, pardon me, the X transpose stuff that's in the human that just isn't in the chimpanzee at all. We'll find out it's not in too many other places either. Secondly, there's this heterochromatic stuff in the human that basically isn't anywhere in the uh, chimpanzee either. And it's actually bigger than what it shows there. It's just about as big as the rest of the chromosome We'll, we'll see that in, an, in another paper in just a bit. And finally, uh, if you're wondering about those crossover areas, you'll notice that uh, they're marked as uh, pseudo-autosomal. That's places where the X and Y chromosomes actually can cross over. But for practical purposes, they're not any of the uh, chromosome. The rest of the chromosome is all male-specific Y. Now, this is the one that's truly amazing, but first, I have to set it up for you. This is a comparison of chromosome 21 in human and chimpanzee. Now, I'm gonna flip the, the white and black because it's easier, but first, I wanna point out that we, don't, we aren't told which end is which. So perhaps the five prime end is at the left and the three prime end is at the, at the right, Perhaps it's vice versa, but whichever one it is, the five prime end has to be at the bottom and the three prime end at the top, or else both of them are switched, because it matches very, very well. Uh, it's a little easier to see in black and white, or in white and black, I guess. And um, if you look at it, there are some interesting parts to it. First of all, there's one part that's a little on the thin side. Uh, there's uh, also some parts where uh, chimpanzee 
uh, matches a number of different places in the human. And the same is true for some places with the human and the chimpanzee. And you can see there's a lot more than what I'm outlining. Um, but uh, those are probably re repetitive elements. But the thing that's uh, interesting is that most of the matching happens on the line. And if somebody said they match 99%, I'd say probably so. Chromosome 21 looks like it's a pretty good match. Now this is what you expect to see. Now you want to see the human and chimpanzee Y chromosome? Watch. Completely disorganized. You'll notice that there are some areas of the chimpanzee that don't match anything in the human. I've outlined probably the biggest one. There's some areas in the human that, except for one little tiny point right there, um, don't match anything in the chimpanzee. And you can see the amplicotic regions that are palindromes, and they're palindromes in both species. The, because it matches either way. You could turn them around, it wouldn't make much difference. And you can see there's a few more palindromes that are not quite as well outlined as the ones I've drawn. Most of what you see is totally disorganized. Now it's interesting to note that in the paper they say, this is the, uh, uh, th this is the, the legend for the figure. In the Y chromosome plot, the human ch uh, chromosome is oriented with short, time short arm to the top and long arm to the bottom. And the chimpanzee is, uh, chromosome is oriented with the short arm to the left and the long arm to the right. What that means is if they were to match the way they're supposed to, they should match this way. Raises an interesting question as to why they flip those. Even the portions that do line up have undergone erratic relocation. In the only other chromosome to have been sequenced to the same degree of completeness in both species, chromosome 21, the authors found much less realignment. You can see how much less realignment. If you're marching along the human chromosome 21, you might as well be marching along the chimp chromosome 21. It's like an unbroken piece of glass, says Page. But the relationship between the human and chimp Y chromosomes has been blown to pieces. Again, this is not me talking, this is Nature News. And again, you can see the, uh, the huge difference between those two chromosomes. Now, they've done more now since, 19, uh, since 2010. They've done rhesus macaque monkey. And uh, you can find this on the internet. Um, and there's the, um, uh, there's the rhesus at the top and then the human at the bottom, uh, in the middle and the chimpanzee at the bottom. And you'll notice that, the, uh, uh, that there's almost no amplicotic stuff. That's a little deceptive, and I'll show you why in a bit. Uh, you'll notice that the human heterochromatin is now drawn fully out in it just about half of the chromosome. But there's a human and rhesus matched together just like we showed the matching of the, uh, uh, of the uh, human and chimpanzee earlier. And here is the chimpanzee and the rhesus, and you can see that they don't match a whole lot either. What's even more interesting is that, you know, the there are amplicotic regions in the human that match um, ex-degenerative regions in the chimpan uh, pardon me, in the rhesus, and the same way for the uh, uh, for the chimpanzee. 
Apparently amplicanic and exdegenerative are not necessarily different from each other if you go to a different species. There's some overlap there uh, of interest if you look particularly at the top right circled area. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, that some of the uh, palindromes in the chimpanzee turn out to have uh, uh, one copy in the uh, rhesus and it's not palindromic, which I guess is why it's not called amplicanic. But um, so has anybody else done any more of this stuff? Well, in um, uh, Skinner the pig in X and Y chromosome, there's an interesting thing. I'm gonna spend a little time on the X chromosome just so you can get some idea. Uh, you'll notice that the pig, we're not gonna count because if it were to match, it would match perfectly. We give you a straight line with only the repeats out to the side. Uh, you'll notice that the pig is not very similar to the cow and the sheep, which are its two closest relatives. Instead, it's more similar to the dog and cat, which are more distant relatives to itself. And it's also uh, closer to the human and chimp, which guess means that we have dog people and we have cat people, at least if you're ladies. And, um, uh, well, actually, if you're men too, because they have X chromosomes as well. And uh, interestingly enough, the human chimp are markedly different from the rabbit, mouse, and rat, but more closely related to the dog, cat, and pig. So, uh, so much for trying to use the X chromosome to determine who's most closely related. Uh, but taking all of that away, the Y chromosome is the part that's the interesting one here. And you will notice we don't have rat and rabbit. All we have is mouse. Uh, and again, we're missing sheep, but we do have cow. Uh, cat and dog, and you're probably going, why is that? Well, it's because the Y chromosome is so difficult to sequence. Because it has all of these repeats and, and reverse repeats and stuff like that. And so it's much easier uh, to do the X chromosome, which tends not to be as repetitive. Um, but you'll notice that there's almost no overlap. I mean, you get some little smatterings of, of blue here, there, there, and there. Completely different Y chromosome, completely different. Now, evolutionary theory, once you get these facts, might expect that with this much evolution between chimpanzee and human Y chromosomes, human Y chromosomes would be markedly different from each other, much more than other chromosomes. That expectation would be wrong. There's an article, and again, you can look it up. And it says, under simple neutral models with constant and equal male and female population sizes, diversity is expected to be proportionate to the relative number of each chromosome in the population. X diversity is expected to be three quarters of autosomal diversity, because there are three X chromosomes for every four autosomes. And both the Y and mitochondrial DNA diversity are expected to be one quarter autosomal diversity. But, Here using uh, these analysis that they're using in the article, we show that low observed Y chromosome variability is not consistent with a purely neutral model. Chromosome y, y diversity is an order of magnitude lower than the equilibrium neutral expectation of one quarter, the autosomal level diversity. In other words, there's less diversity in humans than expected rather than more. Conversely, mitochondrial diversity is not reduced compared to expectations under neutrality. And let me show you figure one. Now, again, you expect the European to be three quarters, and sure enough, it is. You expect 
Africans to be three quarters and there may be a little over. But pretty close, less than one. You expect mitochondrial to be about one quarter and they pretty much are. Although again, with the Africans are slightly above. What you don't expect is the Y chromosomes to be one-tenth of that variation, both in Africans and in Europeans. I don't know what happens with Asians. They didn't uh, run numbers on those people in, in the particular article. There is no comment about the tension between lower rates of mutation in humans and the higher rates of divergence between chimpanzees and humans even though they know about the article because they cite it. The same is true for Wikipedia. Total silence on this, on this issue. If you haven't heard this presentation before, you probably never heard of this problem for Commons Ancestry of Humans and Chimpanzees. Creationist articles do note the difficulties raised by the Y chromosome, and there are several um, just a minute. There's several uh, uh, references. I'm going to skip over them at this point. Um, in Answers Research Journal, there's a really good one by Jeffrey Tompkins. And uh, it notes that uh, chromosome 21 is one of the better ones to match. Uh, and chromosome Y is by far the worst. And of course, you have to remember that that says nothing about the organization of the chromosome. Now, what has been done since that time? Well, somebody did the gorilla. And they tried to figure out a new way of doing Y chromosomes because the first way they tried wasn't very good because it was hard to make a complete chromosome. And the second one was not very good because it was expensive, but it could, you could make it to work. So they tried a third method and they published that. And they didn't say very much, but they noticed that contrary to the expectation though, different proportions of the gorilla Y aligned to the human Y and chimpanzee Y, that is 83.4% and only 70.3% respectively. And you've already seen that 70%, um, less than 70% between the human and the chimpanzee Y, which I guess makes us men closer to gorillas than chimpanzees, but the ladies all knew that anyway. Uh, and um, <clears throat> Uh, but still, 83.4 is nowhere near 99%. And then there's some bonobos and chimps, and uh, this would be fascinating to mine because the percentages are not given. And the interesting thing is if you're predicting uh, bonobos and chimps to come from the same ancestor, which most creations probably would, you would expect that the Y chromosomes should be pretty close to each other. But I can't tell you what percentage it is. However, the numbers are out there somewhere, and um, all it is going to take is somebody to uh, find those numbers, align them, and see what it looks like. Maybe even do a plot just like we did for uh, the uh, human and chimpanzee Y chromosomes. And it'll be fascinating to know what the answers are, and maybe even to publish them. Although I, I wonder if you could get them published if they were close enough to each other, but we'll see. Now, my take in all this, from a naturalistic perspective, chimpanzee and human chromosomes are horrendously different. The difference does not make sense when compared with the slow evolution of human Y chromosomes at least the minimal differences between them. Um, and it raises the question of whether the difference is designed. 
Now, remember we started out talking about the evolutionary expectations for the Y chromosome, which is similarity, the data, which shows the two species Y chromosomes to be horrendously different, the fact that intrahuman variance is less than expected, and the fact that if you put those two things together, evolution fails not only to predict it, it fails to explain it well. But here comes the fun part, research opportunities for creation science. You see, if it is true that only one pair of unclean animals came off of the ark, then we should expect Y chromosomes to not vary very much because it's only had about 4,000 years to do it. And some predictions that could be made, first of all, bonobos and chimps will have very much less change in their Y chromosomes and maybe not much from each other, which would be interesting because they're supposed to be one million years between bonobos and chimps and six million years between uh, chimps and humans and you already know the major changes that have taken place between chimps and humans. It would be interesting to see whether bonobos line up with that or whether they, there's quite a bit of, uh, less difference. And this is sitting waiting for somebody with a, a computer savvy and a, uh, uh, access to the internet to check it out. Uh, it will be interesting to check the interspecies varies in chimps uh, because, again, we have the, that data. Are they low again, like humans are? And finally, it would be interesting to check other animals, horses, zebras, and donkeys, wolves, and foxes. I think one thing we can probably safely say is that there was uh, a gorilla pair and a chimpanzee pair, and they didn't evolve from each other, given the data we have. But you know, I think this is going to be exciting work because it'll be fun. You're testing a hypothesis and you're not going to have everybody else breathing down your neck because um, this isn't exciting research for them. Um, if anything, it's depressing, but it would be exciting for us. But that's my opinion. Now it's your turn. I mean, the similarity, we're talking about sequence, sequencing now? Yeah. The, the order of the base pairs? The order of the base pairs, and, and that comes in two parts. One is the macro order, which you can see in chromosome 21, you can see it's totally busted in, in, in the Y chromosome. And the second is the micro order. That is, in some places, there's not even any reasonable match at all between humans and chimpanzees in the Y chromosome. Well, I mean, you're in, ma in mammals in general, you're going to have muscle proteins. You know, there's going to be a lot of similarity because the structures are similar. Yes. Um, so do we have any hypothesis as how, how much difference there should be because of, the, because of the arrangement, say, of all of these? and body types and so forth? Um, what, what, would, what would, do we have, do, do we not know enough to say it should be at least this much different? Well, we can say that for pigs, monkeys, mice, chimpanzees, and humans, the Y chromosome is enough different that you should be easily able to differentiate the species on the Y chromosome alone. But even more than the Y chromosome. Well, probably more than the Y chromosome, but you know, now you're talking about you know, fine percentages. Because I would assume there would be a, a lot of similarity, but, and then, of course, then turning them on, turning them off, uh, at the right time, uh, maybe more for uh, involved with, say, brain differences and so forth. So it, it, it might, it doesn't take a lot of difference to, <clears throat> uh, genetically, I would think, maybe, um, to account for a lot of difference. Yeah, 
No, I, and, and, and see, the chromosome 21, probably your, your uh, comments are uh, particularly helpful because 99% difference, what does that 1% really mean? Uh, but when you're talking about the Y chromosome, it's not 99%. It's you know, less than 70%, and you can see that stuff that does match matches in all kinds of crazy ways, and in fact, most of it is actually turned around between the chimpanzee and the, and the human. And, uh, and you can see the rhesus monkey really doesn't match either one, although you know, there are some areas that match, but it's not like there's a nice line that, that goes through that. And it looks like the ampliconic areas are actually simply an artificial division because they match uh, at least parts of them match the uh, the X degenerative regions, or what they call the X degenerative regions of the of the rhesus monkey. What it means is that the Y chromosome is uniquely positioned for us to be able to attempt to determine what, uh, how many different kinds of uh, animals would have had to go through into the ark. Uh, they do the rhesus monkey, it'd be interesting to do, for example, other monkeys. You see, because, um, I mean, were there, was there one pair of monkeys that diverged in Old World or New World? Were there two monkeys, sets of monkeys, that one went to Old World and one went to New World? Were there 50 pairs of monkeys that came out? We should be able to make that determination pretty easily if they're as wildly different as what it shows or at least make a reasonable guess at it. And my, my guess is that, is that we should probably do it the old-fashioned way. I think their, their, their new thing trusts too much um, on order. Uh, the, uh, the one where they did gorilla. Uh, I need to see not just the, the uh, base pair, you know, match, uh, matches, but I need to see whether the order is the same as well. It seems like we don't know enough about the whole arrangement of the genome to, to even make any statements about just because it's similar or dissimilar that it's hard to make any statements about what that means. Because there's a lot we don't know about the whole arrangement and well, confirmation and thing. three dimensions. And if they are dissimilar enough then you probably can't say much in terms of evolution because there's been quite a bit of time and I guess maybe the Y chromosome rearranges more easily or something. Uh, but, but if you're talking about a, you know, a flood 4,000 years ago that wiped out basically the vertebrates or at least the terrestrial vertebrates, um, then you should be able to look at the Y chromosome, or in birds, I think it's a W chromosome. It's a W and a Z, which the females there have both, and the males have only one, which is odd, but however it works. Um, uh, we might be able to uh, make at least a minimum estimate of how many different pairs came out of the ark. That's a research project that the standard scientific community is not going to be interested in at all. But I think it's a research project that would, given this data, becomes fascinating. I got a comment back here. I'm a little confused um, in several aspects, having not really thought carefully uh, about X and Y as a homologous pair of chromosomes. It sounds like any gene on either chromosome, X or Y, uh, there's no, there's no, uh, there are not dominant and recessive genes because there isn't a balancing homolog. They're simply expressed. Uh, 
Um, there are some genes that are used in sperm production. And they're found in the male and not in the female. Um, so there are some unique genes, and it would be interesting to see how close those genes match to the, to the, you know, if the, if the area is X degenerate, and from the looks of it, they're all kind of sort of X degenerate, uh, at least judging from the rhesus monkey versus the others, um, then if they're X degenerate, there should be a, a a, a gene on the X chromosome that would match. And uh, it'd be interesting to see whether it takes just a little tweaking of the, of the X gene to make the Y gene, or whether that's a brand new gene. And that's not a question that's really addressed here. I, I noted that. Uh, <laughs> this whole sequence needs to be gone over by somebody who knows well what they're looking at and who is not necessarily sold on the standard evolutionary scenario because we may see some things that nobody else sees because they're not looking for them. Yes, that's uh, one of the fundamental starting points in any good science. You, you ask questions you've never asked before. Um, this is wild, but is it possible that species-specific genes are segregated to X and Y? Because you get this huge similarity in all of the other, in the autosomal chromosomes, and this great dissimilarity. And in the X and the Y chromosome, that, uh, it uh, if, if a follow-up question that maybe is parallel, well, has, gonna, has I, anyone compared X with X in human and chimp? Um, and published it in this way, no. Now, whether there are X chromosomes that are sequenced and published, uh, there may very well be. It's just that this way of, of showing the similarities and differences are, is, is a remarkable way of doing it. And I think that it should be done more. And yet, the rhesus monkey got published that way, but the gorilla data did not. The chimpanzee bonobo data did not. That means that if we can get hold of the raw data, we can have a field day. Um, and some of this stuff claims that the raw data has been put into gene libraries that are available online. So it may simply be a mat, you know, some good 12th grader uh, or 5th or grader for that matter who knows what he's doing in computers might be able to pull this thing off and, and, and write a paper that would be worthy of publication. Because <laughs> um, somebody else has already done the sequencing work, it's just a matter of pulling it out. Yes, comment here, and I think this one up over here as well. Or, Another yeah. area of sequencing would be looking at the donkeys and the horses lineage because the donkeys will reproduce, the horses reproduce, but when you uh, inter interbreed, they end up with a mule that does not reproduce. And so there's something going on with their, their sequences as well that allows them to interbreed and have a, uh, a mixture creation. Mm -hmm. But that cre mixture creation is not able to breed. So there's another sequence uh, area of interest. Yeah, well, it, well it, it, would be, it would be interesting to see what happens uh, with, you know, do we have markedly different Y chromosomes between donkeys and horses? If so, then you pretty much have to have a donkey and a horse on the ark. If not, 
then maybe those divergences are different, you know. Uh, no, I think asking questions that nobody's asked and then trying to answer them uh, is a very good ref uh, recipe for science. And I think this is an opportunity we're being given. Some of it will take a lot of work because you're going to have to learn about how to reproduce one tenth of the Y chromosome in a, a yeast. There's a, form, you know, a formula for doing that, but uh, it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to make it work. But, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of one of the places I want to, I want to see us working on this because um, it's getting to the point where uh, this might be done fairly cheaply after a while. I think there was, uh, nobody was up commenting there. See, to me, this is not just fascinating, and not, I, I don't see how, after this data, you can really make a good case that chimpanzees and humans are descended from a common ancestor six million years ago. I think even if you have accelerated uh, change in uh, chromosomes, so that it's like 20 times, it still doesn't really explain it. Uh, and 70% new is just totally amazing. Um, and it raises the question of why the Y chromosome is even around. There are, as I understand, some mice that just simply don't have a Y chromosome anymore, or at least not a detectable one. Um, but This, to me, is a severe challenge to the idea that human chromosomes and chimpanzee chromosomes evolved from the same ancestor. On top of that, it has the potential of being able to give us some idea of how many animals were in the ark to begin with. And I think it should be worked with. And that's a research project that you will not have people from Stanford and MIT and, and uh, Oxford breathing down your neck. You know, this, uh, there won't be anybody that's going to be trying to publish out from under you or, or beat you to it. Um, I noted this probably in 1915, I think. And four years and nobody's really done much with it. And I think we need to be working on it. And there are people who have far more expertise than I do, but you know, if nobody else gets around to it, I will. At least, at least the uh, the research part of it. Uh, this needs to be done. I'll just just say this, you know. Uh, beyond this change, you have to explain how you're going to get these things spread through population after population after population uh, to get any survival value here and to get it to, I mean, uh, the problems are impossible almost. In, ter yeah. in, in terms of, of wh why, yeah. why did these changes survive here uh, in this, they're meaningful apparently, uh, but how did they spread through the populations? Well, they, they wouldn't spread through the population unless, uh, I mean, you know, you, for you, the Y chromosome, you can't have the genes kind of spread as people mate. The only way you can do this is to have the, the guys kill each other off. Well. <laughs> or 
or the other guy's not having any kids. That can happen. <laughs> that can happen. It has happened in the past. But uh, but the, there is that, that whole problem of, uh, I mean, you can possibly favorable one after favorable one, favorable after favorable one type of thing. But the, the, you've got to face the fact that that, does not, that seldom happens. The postulate that each minor change or each major change that flips something around is advantageous yeah. just, just boggles the mind. Uh, Mount Improbable may be able to be claimed, uh, climbed by slow steps, but when you have to jump across chasms, it's not going to work. Fitness needs needs to have a nice gradual thing. In fact, you can show that if there's a dip in fitness that's more than two uh, DNA changes, it's a no-go. Uh, for especially for big animals like people, you know, that have long generation times. It's not going to work. Bacteria, you can make it. Bacteria, you can probably get up to about five or six if you're very, very lucky, although most of the time it still takes the, the uh, uh, path of least resistance and moves on finding a uh, slipshod uh, correction rather than, a, rather than a good one. Uh, when you see something that's exquisite and that needs all the parts to begin with. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of Michael Behe. And he's right. And the only real question is, are there any pathways that are, that are like that? And it appears that the answer is yes, and in that case, um, the, the, whole, the whole philosophical evidence comes tumbling down because once God gets his fingers into it, you never know what's going to happen. That, uh, and of course, that's the complaint that people have is that you get God into science and, uh, and suddenly uh, science isn't the same. Well, that's probably true. And the question is, you're going to have to live with that anyway, in which case, better start living with it. Well, I can live much more easily with the idea that there's a designer here than to think this all happened by itself. I, that one's an impossibility almost. Yeah. Then, of course, at that point, theology becomes as important or even more important than science in determining what happens. Then it becomes important what kind of theology you should have. Um, and the scientists then become partially defrocked. But, but the, the science says that, I'm speaking in terms of, you know, the fine-tuning of the universe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the origin of life. Yeah. I mean, you're just baffled. Your science says, hey, this... <laughs> We're, we're, we're through. We can't, we can't answer this. Yeah. You're, you're stuck with that issue which the science points to. I guess, and the, the important point here is that the science points to separate or at least it points to design inference here. And given last week where it looks like the Y chromosomes go back to about 4,500 years, more or less, um, it looks like science is not only pointing to separate ancestry, or at least, you know, design input, um, it looks like also 
it's pointing towards a uh, short time frame. That is not where science traditionally has been wanting to go. That's a whole new area we need to discuss more often. Yes, yes. Well, yes, one more comment here. It would be interesting to find out whether the human Y chromosome initially was about the same size as the chimpanzee. And with that article that you had several years ago where the uh, rogue chromosomes were able to be added on to the chromosome uh, a genome pattern on individual those mice that had them very cl clearly identified. It's possible that the extra uh, genetic material that we see on the uh, human Y chromosome may have uh, been rogue chromosome from ingestion of uh, abnormal chromosomes from uh, different things based upon that article that you had on the mice. I mean, you're, you're, you're suggesting that perhaps uh, we've gotten some uh, animal DNA incorporated into our DNA. Um, I don't think it's been a major amount because humans appear to be able to be uh, accounted for pretty much by standard mutations. Where you're not getting it is between humans and chimpanzees. And that's the problem. Uh, and I think it's a huge problem for evolution. And uh, uh, you know, we would have to we would have to do more. Uh, f you know, find where. Uh, human chromosomes uh, incorporate DNA from elsewhere. Uh, but that won't change the fact that there are uh, completely new genes on humans, so-called orphan genes. What we those, those can't be gotten from what you eat. What would be interesting is if they were able to collect from the marrow of an old, old, old skeleton and be able to take and do a Y chromosome analysis from a marrow of a, uh, of a skeleton that uh, was a very, very old skeleton. And if that uh, Y chromosome was virtually identical with the present one, that would uh, be very, very interesting. Well, in that case, you would have to do uh, Y chromosome data. Uh, and you may not be able to get the entire Y chromosome because it may be partly broken up. Uh, all you would get is pieces of it, and apparently that's how they determine that Neanderthals are you know, closely related to humans and so forth. Um, that data would have to be, be approached carefully, but, uh, but might lend some, uh, y you might be able to get Y chromosomes that are older. Um, and, you know, there's the question of the Cohens and how far back that chromosome goes. There's the Iceman. There's all kinds of things that would be interesting to do. Um, whether they can be done as well as we want to is a different question, but uh, the, we may be able to find more than traditionally we thought we could. I mean, after all, Dinosaurs were once thought to be completely replaced by uh, uh, minerals. Turns out they're not. And uh, we haven't really... Uh, th there are a lot of experiments that we just haven't even touched and should. So. Uh, I guess one of the things I would say is not just that there are certain things that we should be interested in, it is that it may very well be possible to do some of them. And the only way we're going to find out which ones can be done and which ones can't 
is to actually try. And that means that we have something worthwhile to do. Um, and if we present it correctly, it's very possible that we'll be able to publish some of it. Uh, some of the people that have been here have been able to publish stuff that you ordinarily wouldn't be believe they could do uh, simply by not drawing the obvious conclusions, allowing the conclusions to jump out of the paper, so to speak, but not, not for you to say them. Because if you say them, of course, then you're on the wrong side and you need to be squashed. But if you don't say them, then, uh, then you just publish and then you let other people draw their own conclusions. And maybe that's one of the things we should be doing more in science as well. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, and I hope that somebody gets inspired because otherwise I'm going to have to wait a few years and do it myself. Because <laughs> somebody needs to do this. There's no two ways about it. Anyway, um, uh, next week we'll see if we can finally get to the uh, to the uh, uh, issue of germs and, and cancer. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I have a little more time this week than I would ordinarily, so we'll we'll see. Anyway, see you next week. <laughs>